Hey internet, it's uh, Mike and you're watching Mike Jones Knife and Tool. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about PPE. I know it's not the most exciting uh, topic, but it is the most important. So if you stick around till the end, uh, I'll show you the knives that uh, I finished up this morning that I was working on in the last video, gluing up the handles. Alright, so like I said, I know this isn't the most exciting topic, but I'm just going to try to rip through some stuff really quick because uh, I got it occurred to me this morning that while I was uh, shaping up this fiberglass micarta handle that uh, just in case anyone's taken these as kind of a how-to videos I should probably uh, take the responsible route and at least touch on some of this stuff as I go so number one first of all you saw me wearing a dust mask uh, this is an actual respirator the paper ones are good just for particulate but um, a lot of the stuff the epoxies and things like that that we're working with um, anything that's chemical could be releasing a lot of uh, toxic gases so one of these is better they'll actually filter a lot of that out of your breath so I always keep spares of stuff around in case I got friends over it doesn't hurt these things aren't that expensive compared to how many dust masks those paper ones are gonna go through so it's better for your lungs you don't want to have asthma after a couple years of shaping handles on knives uh, next we'll talk about uh, ear protection uh, earmuffs are awesome. They block out so much noise. They're great. Um, again, I keep a spare around just because uh, these little foamies Those guys are they're they're good, too um, Obviously, they're disposable you go through a lot of them muffs are they're easy to come by and they're pretty cheap They're just they get kind of warm I guess uh, in the summertime when it's hot out. So there's a trade-off there, but uh, I also have some custom made earplugs. Sometimes you'll see me without my muffs on. I've got custom made, uh, custom molded ones for uh, carpentry, running a lot of circular saws and table saws and stuff. So those ones are even better. But um, yeah, protect your ears if you uh, if you want to. Unless you want to have hearing aids when you're 30, then by all means uh, you can listen to the whining of grinders all day long. But if you want to hear your grandkids sing, protect your ears. Um, eyeballs. Safety glasses are good. Um, they're not great, especially if you're working in a really dusty, completely dusty environment. Um, you'll see me wearing a, a shield, a full face shield, because I'm shooting a lot of sparks everywhere off of that angle grinder with zip, dust, zip discs. So a shield is better. Or a uh, or the goggles, like ski goggles, that seal all the way around your, your eyes. They're the best, because then dust can't get in there. Um, and if you ever have to have an MRI in the future, they put you in a giant electromagnet and uh, it'll actually suck tiny shavings, tiny steel filings out of your eyeballs. So try to keep them out of there. Here's one thing that I'm going to have to cut into the middle of my thing because I forgot to talk about it was clothing. If you're going to be shooting tons of sparks around, don't be wearing any uh, loose clothing for one that can get caught in grinders just like the gloves. And, uh, and don't be wearing anything that's uh, raggedy and torn and has got a lot of frills on it because uh, you can shoot a ton of sparks into it and it'll catch fire on you so it has happened and it'll happen again so wear good clothing and then we'll talk about gloves now this is a touchy topic because a lot of people don't like wearing gloves um, with rotary tools grinders uh, bench grinders things like that and fair enough because they'll say that a, a glove can get caught and suck you right in um, it depends on the tool I think I, I could see that happening with a bench grinder um, maybe an angle grinder too, they're pretty powerful. That little flat top 4x36 that I usually grind on is, uh, I can, I can kill that thing just by pressing too hard on the belt, so I'm not real concerned about that one, but a lot of the time I'll wear these really thin gloves just to protect my hands, um, keep them, uh, keep from getting slivers, especially metal slivers, they hurt like a bitch, but, and they're really grippy too, so keep a good grip on stuff. If I'm just doing rough grinding, sometimes I'll wear these big, heavy, uh, welding gloves just to keep the heat away from my hands. They're a little more dangerous because they're they're big and floppy I could see this stuff actually getting caught in something so I try to be extra careful when I'm wearing those and then um, Again with uh, the chemicals and the epoxies and things like that you can actually absorb a lot of that through your skin So it's not a bad idea to have a box of latex gloves and it keeps your hands cleaner. And you're not getting them covered in glue so That's it quick and dirty nice and easy right less than four minutes um, So here like I promised I'll show you there's a the little guy, uh, that's a, the micarta handled one with the white liners in it. Turned out pretty nice. 
And then this guy with the what we're calling Coca Polo handle and the yellow liners. Let's see if we can get some better light on that there. Right on. So, thanks for watching, and uh, now I feel better about myself.